Welcome in to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. We're excited to be back with you. Hope everybody's having a great 4th of July weekend. Uh, Bubba, there was no Rick and Bubba University last week because you and I were on vacation, but welcome back, buddy. We're back. Glad to be here, Rick. And Rick, what a special guest we have today, someone we've wanted to have on the podcast since we started, none other than Greg's wife, Lisa Burgess. Hello, Lisa Burgess. Hey. <laughs> now, I know that you've been nervous about this. And, and there's no need and, to and be. You, you've made that very clear, but there's no need to be nervous. None. Okay. It's, it's just us sitting here talking. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Greg's minions are out there and, you know, they're ready to, you know, uh, to, to listen to what you're going to say about them. And, you know, they, they, they consider you to be one of the luckiest women on the planet. And I know that's how you feel being married to Greg Burgess. Every day. (laughs) You know what, you know what I said? Hey, just call me blessed. I mean, (laughs) it is what it is, you know? (laughs) And, uh, it's good for those that that are are watching it on YouTube. Uh, your house looks so lovely and you, you, and you keep a a beautiful house. So that's a little, little look there into the, the home of, of Alicia and Greg. Oh yeah. And you hear Chloe Grace in the background. I do hear Chloe Grace, but it's not too bad. As long as we're talking. Yeah. uh, Lisa's got it turned up with her uh, leopard print on. Yeah. I noticed you went with a leopard print today. Look at you. Well, (laughs) <laughs> so, I, just thought, I thought I'd put some clothes on this quarantine. You know, I don't go, I don't go many places, so I thought I might need to get out of my pajamas today. That'd be nice. Yeah, well, <laughs> well you look beautiful, and, and I do want okay. everybody, and I don't know, it's really none of our business. Maybe we'll ask you the kind of underwear that Greg wears, but, you know, with us, with our partnerships and partners, uh, Tommy Johns, when I, you remember this, when we first started talking to Tommy Johns, uh, you and I, like a lot of men, we, we, we think that when we're whenever we become – an adult, we just leave our parents' house with the underwear that were that my, our moms bought for us, and that's oh, yeah. Our, yeah. And, and that's our underwear for the rest of our lives. But when Tommy Johns came to us and said, "Hey, you guys start wearing some of our underwear, and and let's see if you want to talk about our product, the ultra breathable underwear." And now, uh, you know, for ladies, Lisa and, and Sherry knows this too. They also uh, do bras and they do women's underwear as well. Uh, they've got a range of summer ready breathable options now. And what I love about it cool cotton underwear for men and women and what it's like it's having it's like your body has its own air condition uh so they're made from premium natural uh cotton for enhanced airflow and and it evaporates sweat super fast so if you do start sweating it evaporates it keeping you drier and cooler and more comfortable than than some of the regular cotton they use the pima cotton p-i-m-a and it really does make a difference now if you want to add some chill uh, when the summer heats up, choose Tommy John Cool Cotton Underwear. Uh, and if you want to upgrade today, they have some enhanced designs that are super breathable, way more comfortable than anything else out there, and we love them. Now, here's the there's the guarantee they have, Bubba. It, best pair you ever wear, or it's free, guaranteed. All right. So if you'd like to find out more about getting Tommy John, no adjustment needed. Uh, just go to Tommy John. Uh, slash it's tommyjohn.com slash rick bubba just r-i-c-k-b-u-b-b-a that's going to get you 20 percent off the entire site tommyjohn.com slash rick bubba for 20 percent off site wide and don't forget it'll be the best pair you ever wear or it's free guaranteed tommy john no j- adjustment needed so lisa you know i know that see i've known you since you were how old Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen years old, and that's yeah. when you and Greg first started. Uh, were y'all official girlfriend, boyfriend then, or just started dating? Okay, well, this is how it was. Okay, look at that's that. what we got to know. Look I, at I used, that. I used to see him at the skating ring, so I, I knew who he was. Now, he was too cool to skate, but he would – he would come in about ten o'clock. I'm a good skater though. Zip it. <laughs> he would come. He would come in about ten o'clock with his posse, right. and they would walk around. You know, they were like I said, too too cool to skate. I'd be out there tearing that floor up. Yes. Skating, <laughs> but I would see I would see him walking around, and I knew who he was. I knew that he was your brother because at the time you were dating my cousin Carla. That's right. Yep. And so um, she called me on a Sunday. March the 8th, 1981. I, I'm good at remembering dates. Um, uh, but she called me that morning, Sunday morning, and she said, hey, you need to get up and get ready. Rick just called, and he's coming over today, and he's bringing Greg. Greg wants you to come over. Well, you know, 13 years old, and here I was. See, I was in the seventh grade, 
and Greg was in the ninth at the time. So I was at the middle school. I wasn't at the high school with y'all. So, you know, knowing that he wanted me to come over, that was a pretty big deal. Oh, yeah. So my first, my first thought was, what am I going to wear? You know, so I jump up and start getting ready and put on my cheap jeans and, uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> and my pink sweater because pink was my color. Oh, I yeah, love that. pink. Now, Lisa, yeah. was that over in Bonnerville? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was the beginning of it. My sister Susie took me and dropped me off. And then Rick, you and Greg came over and um, the rest is history. That's how it started. So you guys have been some sort of couple. And I know if, over time there was, you know, like young people do, there's a breakup, then a start back and all this. Yeah. So how many total years? Because I know you've been married for a little over 30, right? Well, been, well 39. 39 years because that was Good that night. was right. I know. I have been with him more than I've been alive. I mean, my, he's, you know, <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, phew, I'm pretty proud of myself. Let me pat myself on the back. 39 uh, years of Greg. Yeah, 39 years with Willie G here. Pop on in here, Willie G. 39, 39. years. <laughs> 39. I'm here if you need me. That's right. So <laughs> Playing the role of Jim the Sun, man. <laughs> that's Greg. Right. That's great. I'm over here if you need me. So you guys got... Um, you, you dated for, you know, so from 13 years on, on and off, more on than off, uh, for the rest of your time together. And then you guys got married uh, in what year? 89. In, in ni- 1989. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. and that, that, of course, when I've told that story a lot about your wedding day. Uh, there, there was really some bad weather in the area. And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and you, you of course, were very nervous anyway because everything needed to go perfect like every bride. Yeah. And, and I remember that I was assigned, of course, with my mullet blazing to go out and light the candles. <laughs> and and I didn't know that you could see me. I didn't know where they had you, you know, or what, but you could see me. And, and the candles would not light. Do, do you remember that moment? Oh, Rick Burgess, do I remember that moment? Oh, my gosh. It was flash flood warning. It was it was supposed to be a six p.m. candlelight wedding. You know, my vision was for the lights to be dim and just just a little bit of light. But the whole church was being lit up with lightning. So they took me to the balcony. So I'm in the balcony watching below what's going on, and I see you and my brother Tommy trying to light the candles, and they wouldn't light. It was horrible. And then I'm, I'm just thinking, is this a sign? Somebody <laughs> yeah. trying to tell me something? <laughs> Do I need to run right now? Because, it, I mean, it was just thundering and lightning and storming so bad. And then my candles went light. And then it dawned on me, I forgot to put my perfume on. I'm going to walk down the aisle without my perfume on. <laughs> right. So, so that reminded you to make that adjustment? <laughs> so I, I, yeah, it, it was a, it was a. A little bit upsetting, but you know, I yeah, mean, yeah. if if we didn't have little things like that that happen, I mean, gosh, you know, they say when you go through things or whatever, you know, it you come out stronger. And mm-hmm. and there's there's this phrase that you know you go through so many things in your life. Sometimes you feel like you should be strong enough to lift a Buick or something, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, my life with this and right here, I could probably lift an eighteen wheeler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I remember that what happened was the the wicks on the candles had dry rotted, and so when I yes. brought when I brought the fire to them, they just went. Oh no! Just yeah. not <laughs> lighting and them disappearing. Yeah, everything. Right. And then finally, I realized well, there's you know, and your brother and I were talking about it. I was like, "There's nothing we can do. We're going to no. have to walk away with some lit, yeah. not lit." But I think to myself, she's never going to know because she's a bride. She's not going to look up and notice that when she's coming down the aisle, and there's Greg looking at her, and you know, and, and you, and then what I didn't know is you were in the balcony watching it the whole time and stressing. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, I, I seen the whole thing unfold. I did. <laughs> yeah. The but, big question, yeah. and you touched on it, being married to Greg Burgess. Um, I mean, Lisa, you know, I grew up with Greg. There's two people right now that probably have been with Greg the longest, and that would probably be you, me, and, of course, Greg's parents. There's really nobody yeah. else that can get into that. You you are sitting there in the number two spot behind his mother, father, and brother. And, <laughs> That's and, true. And, yeah, and, and so you have spent 39 years. Is there anybody on this planet like Greg Burgess? Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um what people don't really know about Greg, <clears throat> he, um, he, 
What? <laughs> Greg, you spat at this. this. He's over here yakking. Greg, we're not interviewing you. We're, we already interviewed you. This, this is Lisa. Hush it. Um, <laughs> no, he... Uh, he has this persona on the air as, you know, he's this, you know, turd. I mean, you know, he's just... He's <laughs> well, we don't really market it that way, but... Uh, well, no, but nobody he is. Just says, I mean, he just he, says what he thinks. Yeah. She's, yeah, he does. Right. He does. He's shooing Chloe behind me right now. Yeah, right. Um, but, yeah, um, he really has a soft side. He does. He's, he's, he's got a really good heart. Um, the, he's got a temper now, and, and it, it doesn't take much to get him going. He right. gets mad, and, and it's and it's most of the time it's about things that are just you know silly that doesn't matter, like, like the dogs barking. Or, yeah, like like his face right yeah, now. Or, yeah, that right there. Yeah. yeah, if you can see what he's doing right now, he's like. <laughs> I can. I saw his profile just a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's making him mad. He's about to throw around the yard. <laughs> Y'all about to see a chihuahua go right behind. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're right. He, like we've said before, you know, one of the things about his persona is he seems to have passion and gets upset about things that no one else does. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. He gets mad about little things and pitches fits. And like your mom, Nana, our precious Nana, she has apologized to me my whole life for Greg. Right. You know, yeah. She's always like, I'm so sorry. I don't know how you put up with him. I'm so sorry, you know, because he, he just... He pitches fits is what he does. He, he, he reverts back to this, this like three-year-old and, and things aren't going his way and he gets all mad. But then when it's done, it's done. Right. There's no, it's not a lingering thing. You know, he's fine and he, then nothing ever happened, you know, so. Well, Lisa, um, when we think of you, we think of Job. We do. Yeah. J-O-B. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> there he is again. Try to be on your podcast. <laughs> uh, but Feed but, the dog, Greg. So. <laughs> so being married to Greg, some things that we've seen, th- let's go back because when you guys first got married, he was working for the power company yes. and, and, you know, I'm talking about, and, and, and Greg has an incredible work ethic. I mean, he, he is a hard worker. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah he and he's does. a good, and he'll drive three hours to get a power cable. <laughs> yes, he will. He'll drive all the way back to Birmingham, get a power cable and come back. That was fun yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but, but that, that was the talk about being married to somebody. And of course he was working his way up through the company. But a large portion of, uh, you know, the first part of being married was when he could be – I remember we would try to get together, and Bubba talked about this being a, when he was doing an engineer. is very similar. And you never know when Greg was going to like, hey, I'm sorry, i got to go. Uh, w- what was that like? Because <laughs> I can remember getting together, even family things, and you know, a storm would come rolling up that wasn't any big deal where we were, and all of a sudden you'd see him have to go take a phone call, and then he would be gone. Talk about those years. Yeah, or a, a, a squirrel would get in a line, you know, just things that you, a lot of that, a lot of that <laughs> happened. Um, to be honest, you know, Alabama Power, the Southern Company, they provided our family with a wonderful, wonderful life. He was with them for over 20 years yeah. and, and he loved it, loved every minute of it. And still to this day, we'll be in the car driving down the road and he's going to point out Hey, I built that right there. Me and he starts naming everybody in his crew. You know, sure. he, he has wonderful memories and he made lifelong friends. And and for that, you know, it, it was great um, for the mama and the wife end of it. Um, it was hard because he missed a lot, you know, with the kids not being able to come to the games. Chandler, you know, she cheered her whole life since she was five years old. And then Taylor, our son, um, you know, he was baseball football, basketball, he did it all. So a lot of times I was kind of like a single parent, you know, loading them up and here we go because he would get called out. Um, it was an inconvenience. It was, and I hated it for him because he, he was missing out on some things. Um, but it, it was just, it's part of it, you know, in any wife of a, uh, lineman, anyone that works, you know, in that type of field, it's going to happen. And, and it, you know, we, there was, I remember one day we were dressed, ready to walk out the door, going somewhere and he got called in and it was just like, okay, you know, so that did happen. But like I said, you know, it, we are blessed by the power company, Alabama power and, and what they did for our family. And, um, and then this opportunity came along and I think that, you know, I've said it to so many people that say, you know, I can't believe that Greg left the power company, you know. Um, but when God lays things out in front of you, you know, you can either look at it and go, 
gosh, you know, is it, should I do this? You know, it, sometimes we trust him, but you know, there's that hesitation at times too, that comes with it. So when this job there with, with you, you know, came open, we sat down and talked about it and we prayed about it. And, you know, this was a big deal in our life in our family for him to leave the power company and come there. But, um, you know, it, it was just this peace that came over me and I knew it was what God wanted us to do for, for, for him. You know, he, the hours that he put in, it was a lot, you know, when he was getting tired and, and worn down and, um, you know, a lot had happened in our family, you know, uh, with precious Bronner, you know, yeah. there was a lot, um, in the fact that he and you get to be together every day and, you know, family is so important. And I, I don't know, I, I just, I knew without a doubt when this came up that this was, this was God saying, this is what you need to do and everything else you'll just adjust, you know, you'll adjust and, and everything's going to be fine. And I felt that and, and Greg did too. And, and, you know, and, and once again, you know, it, it, this was not something that he was even knew anything about as far as the radio business, but he's learned a lot. Um, and, you know, he gets to be with his brother and with, you know, with Bubba and, and the guys every day. And um, it, it's a blessing. It really is. And, and let me say, while I'm talking about the show, um, people ask me all the time, how does it feel, you know, for your, for your world, your life to be played out on the air and for people to know everything about you and what you're doing and what's going on? And I just want to say this, and I mean this from my heart, um, the Rick and Bubba listeners are just precious and the tubers. I have so many social media uh, friends and I know y'all are going to laugh, um, but I just want to, I just want to give them a shout out because I'm going to tell you, um, I just went through a, a really hard time. I lost my dad, yeah. you know, seven months ago. Uh, my dad went through lung cancer and, and he's in heaven now. Um, and it's been hard. It's been yeah. a struggle and I, I'm still battling through it every day. Um, but I have had the the most thoughtful, sweet uh, Rick and Bubba fans that 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 privately contact me um, and to let me know that they are praying for me. And I had one that actually sent a card to the Rick and Bubba show Um uh, with my name on it, and Greg brought it home while my daddy was still battling his cancer. And I opened it up and it was just from a listener. And it was a, um, a church bulletin and she had put my daddy's name on mm -hmm. their church bulletin. Um, one is she put a note in there. Do you remember that? Yeah, on the prayer list. It, yes. She put daddy on the prayer list at her church. Um, she, I don't know her. I don't know anything about this person, but for someone that doesn't know me, knowing what I was going through to, to do that, to add my daddy's name to their prayer list at their church, um, I just wanted to, to throw that out there. I mean, you know, there are so many, so many good people out there. And, and y'all's listeners, they just, they just touch my heart. And I just want to say that. And I just want to say thank you for all the prayers that I have gotten through all this with my dad. It, it has, um, I couldn't get through it without him. And I just want to say thank you for that. Well, you yeah, really yeah. did a great job. You you really hit on that, Lisa. And I think that sometimes I'm so glad that with Greg coming to work here and, you know, Bubba and I went through the same thing thinking would Greg even, you know, there's one thing to want to do something. And then there's another thing, another different scenario was saying we're really going to do it and we can do it. And, and Bubba and I both were kind of like, Hey, let's at least ask, and see if he would even consider it. And I was actually surprised when he said that he would. But, but he said he wouldn't to start with. Yeah, yeah he said he wouldn't, <laughs> then he came back. But when you when you you knew this, because you've known Greg, you know, uh, longer than anybody on the planet other than his family, and and that he he and I both had a love for the entertainment business. It wasn't just me. We both did. And, you know, we got to be in bands together, and, and Greg has always liked that side of things too. He's naturally funny, and he, he likes a good one. And all of that, and, and so I, I went ahead, and he took the job. You know that he felt like was more. Hey, this is. I want to have some security. I want to have some benefits. I want to be a family man. And and then I went down the road of the entertainment business, trying to make it happen. And it's really cool that God opened that door for us to do this together as grown men, as you just said, at a time in our lives when I think that's it, it was it was perfect timing, uh, as it usually is. 
uh, on God's part, and then you guys have got to experience what you just said. Bubba and I have just been blown away by the connection. That's why radio, and I know we're in these other formats now, and some of your, you know, and, and we love those, but radio is such an intimate medium. There's something personal. You don't feel really personally connected to the person you see on TV or the person you see on a movie screen. But in radio, there's always been that personal connection. And, and there, there's people that treat you and Greg and Bubba and me and Sherry and Betty and all the other guys on the show and their wives and children as their own family. And the encouragement that they bring us, I was thinking about last week even on the beach, thinking these people are the ones that, that make it happen. And like you were talking about, when, when Bronner went to heaven, Sherry and I still have at home, and I'm not exaggerating, cases – Mm-hmm. of letters, cases mm-hmm. of people sending us stuff from all over the country, uh, some who knew us and some who didn't. And and we're very fortunate, as you discovered during your time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, of difficulty. You know, people always ask us, is it difficult doing this and being in the public? And I kind of hear you saying what I say. I, I mean, there might have been a few times in the last 26-plus years where you felt like, there was something maybe that you go, well, that was kind of difficult. But the audience, for me and for Bubba and for you, the way they treat us is wonderful. There's really been nothing mm-hmm. real negative about it. It's actually, it's actually a warm, wonderful feeling, not a mm-hmm. not a not a hassle at all. Right, right. Well, Lisa, yeah. you, you mentioned the brothers working together. Uh, have you ever had to ask them to go outside so they don't tear up any equipment before they fight? <laughs> <laughs> Our rule here is being fight all you want, just take it outside. Just take it, take it outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bubba nearly saw one one time during band practice. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, Greg and I have a, you know, we, we're all over stormy weather. Right. We're very, very close. Okay, listen, listen, hey, stormy weather. Listen, go ahead. Listen, speaking of stormy weather, okay, this is, this is hilarious. I got so excited the night before last that I forgot to tell you, you know, he has to go to bed. He shuts it down. He, he can't, he can't, he can't hang anymore. <laughs> yeah. He falls asleep. The minute he gets home, he sits down and, and we'll be talking. He'll say, Hey, let's watch a movie. And I'll say, okay. So we find a movie five minutes into it. He's, you know, <laughs> he, he's over there sleeping. I just watch it without him. Um, but I forgot to tell him he had already gone to bed the other night. And I was going through my uh, Apple Music looking for stuff to put in my phone to listen to. And I found Mr. Lucky. I was so excited. And so I, I put it all on my phone and I laid there. And it was like, yes. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. And I mean, I was in there. I, was, I mean, I was getting it. It brought back so many memories of, um, you know, I mean, that was. that it brought was, back when you was a groupie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Greg, look at that look. <laughs> See, I don't like that word. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not a good word, is it, Lisa? Backstage. I know there are pictures, but I wasn't a groupie. Yeah. <laughs> I was your boo. It's different. <laughs> it's different being your boo. But your I was his boo. I wasn't his groupie. Uh, <laughs> well, to to talk about what, to those in the audience that don't know, you know Mr. Lucky and, and Bubba and I and, and Greg and all of us, we, we put together – a band and and oh, th- I was th- th- that. Th- yeah that we were doing and Greg and I were in bands earlier but what you some of you know some of you don't know that when we actually put out the Fat Chance album of nine originals uh, about half of those originals were go way back to when Lisa and Greg were were dating and when we were in a band called Silent Rain and another band called Mystique. Was that back when she was a group? <laughs> yeah, when she was his boat. <laughs> Bill so, Bussie, you better hush. Yeah, so so the, the, the reason why she has so much nostalgia with it is she remembers those songs when Greg and I were in our early 20s or even late teens uh-huh. when, when we wrote those songs. And you remember my favorite one, Rick? Remember what my favorite one was? Age of Miracles? Yes. Yes, uh, and that's cut I one. I turned it up. I listened to that one several times. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know Lisa's very talented, too. Uh, Lisa, you, you do a lot of impressions. Uh oh. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> no. Involuntary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, 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 got, you do a pretty good one of my wife, Betty. Yeah. You've got a Betty impression that's pretty good. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing. She's too tickled to do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> that laugh. Got, yeah, what's what's great about Lisa? Lisa does impressions of like just people we know. Right. It's right. not any celebrity or anything. Like it's just people that we know. And, uh, I, I, love, I, love, I love Betty. I love her laugh. She makes me laugh when she laughs. And how she laugh? <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk. Let's talk about too with you and Greg being married. So you said that the part of the show was a, was a great transition. You've actually loved the audience. Do you ever though? Because I know our wives. Over time, you get to where it doesn't bother you anymore. But I can remember when Sherry and I first got married, and she was like. Why are people asking me about fill in the blank? Yeah. Did you yeah. talk about that on the show? And I'm like, honey, we got we got four hours uh, to fill every day. Have you had those moments where you're like, did you talk about that on the show? Yeah, I have. There's there's a lot of times that I've walked in the door at work and somebody say, oh, you know, uh, Greg was talking about such and such this morning. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get him. Uh, and there, there are times that I have actually, when I was listening, I'll send a text sometimes and – he makes me nervous. And so, because he, he does just say what he thinks. Um, and sometimes I will send a text and he'll act like he doesn't have any service in the, in the, in the studio. So he can't, cause I'll say, you didn't text me back. And he'll say, I didn't get it. Yes, I did. Yeah. We don't have hardly any service here in Vestavia Hill. Or uh -huh. okay. no, I, well. I mean, yeah, there's only whatever. probably four different companies that blanket it, you know? <laughs> There are times that I will text and say, okay, you need to just turn it down a notch. Back it off. No, Back it times, off. It got so bad, and we almost had a rule that she couldn't listen to the show anymore. Yeah, he tried to tell me one time I just couldn't listen to the show anymore. I said, you're not the boss of me. Right. I am going to listen to the show, but you just need to behave. I mean, there are times he, you know. You, you just, think, yeah, you're like, you're afraid. You Didn't you tell him sometimes that if you were a listener, you wouldn't like him on some things he says? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I would not be his friend if I didn't have to be. I would the not. audience gets it. Yeah, it's he, so, says, yeah. he says the audience gets it. I you know what makes you the I, most nervous when he makes fun of callers? Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know how you know how when stuff makes me nervous or, or whatever, my eyes start watering. I don't know why. But my eyes listen. You're trying to make up for Rick. <laughs> Rick can cut onions if in Rick a closet, Burgess, not listen. not shed a tear. Rick Burgess, you, uh, Greg's bad enough, but you do it to me too. I be like, sometimes I get the phone out and about text you too. I get so nervous when y'all start like making fun and stuff. And then my, I'm sitting here at home and my eyes are watering. <laughs> I'm like, I need y'all to stop right now. Be sweet. Be nice. Stop well, it. Lisa, I got to know this though. You know, Greg is much beloved by many of the female listeners to the show. Yeah. And they. <laughs> And they look at you like, I mean, you've you've hit the lottery. Yeah. How does it feel to be the woman <laughs> that Greg Burgess comes home to every night? I'm just living the dream, Bubba. I'm <laughs> living the dream. I mean, you know. Well, I don't think she sees it quite that way. <laughs> well, um, I, but, but I mean, you obviously, when you saw him walk in that skating ring with his socks on and no shoes, but he's not going to skate, too cool for that. I mean, you saw, you saw him in his tight-fitting jeans. You know what it is, honestly, straight up straight up it is one of these things that you know he was like he was older than me and he there was just some sort of like bad boy persona about James him. name I never even thought <laughs> how, how much either. older is Greg than you Lisa uh, a year, two months, and eight days. <laughs> but <laughs> I told y'all I keep Let's up with stuff. But, but you, you thought you thought you know he's a he's a bad boy. I mean you know I just a little bit of that yeah. I can tame the bad yeah. boy. Yeah, I thought well you know and and of course he reached out for me first. I did. He did. What? I ain't <laughs> yeah, he he <laughs> um, he initiated it. So yeah, yeah so um. So no. skating in them chick jeans. <laughs> There he goes. <laughs> so you skating them chick jeans. He just says things. He just says things. I know. Inappropriate or not. Um, no, I I will say this about Greg. Once once that first day that we got to hang out, um, I don't know, and I know I was 13. I was just a, you know, just a little teenager. But um I just I just felt in my heart and I told my family, I'm gonna marry him. Did he you really at 13? 
I did at 13 years old. I told my mom, I said, I'm going to marry him. And of course, once we got together and he started coming over to the house, my mother just loved him. I mean, <laughs> did he just say, of course? of course? He said, of course. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, he would come over. She would go in the kitchen and fix him whatever he wanted to eat. Taco. Yeah, she always fixed him stuff. But she just loved him. And um, she went to heaven when I was 18. Yeah, and, that uh, yeah, that was that was hard. And I, I always say, and it still is, um, I always say that because she always told me, Greg will take care of you. I, I, I know that Greg will take care of you. She left this earth and went to heaven knowing that her 18 year old baby girl was going to be taken care of. And I think that that comforted her knowing that because something about him, she just loved him and she knew that he loved me and that he would always take care of me and treat me well. And she knew that. And um, not only, you know, getting with Greg and marrying Greg, um, God sent me Nana and, you know, at 18 years old, losing my mom, uh, that was hard. It was, it was, it was hard. And I, you know, I was sad and angry and, and all these emotions wrapped all up into one. Um, and I just, I know without a doubt, you know, we always say that, you know, God, he, he has plans for all of us and, and our life is laid out and, and, and he knows exactly um, what's going to happen. We don't, and we have to trust him, but I know um, you know, God was preparing me for, for losing my mom when I was 18 and he, he sent Nana to me. He sent y'all's mom, you know, so not only did I get Greg, I got Nana, I got you, I got Angie, you know, I got Pop, I got the Burgess family that, that completely loved me through losing my mom, you know, um, and I'm so, I'm so thankful for that. I, I could not have gotten through all these years um, without Nana, without her, because she stepped right in. She just stepped right in and, um, and took over, you know, and was there for me. And, you know, um, my mom missed out on my wedding. She wasn't here for Taylor or Chandler. You know, the big things in my life, I, I didn't have my mom, but I had Nana and I'm, I'm so thankful. So the the Lord took care of me when he when he placed me in the the Burgess family. Well, and we we benefited from you being in this family too, and and continue to. So let's let's talk about grandparents. We believe oh. we believe that Greg's heart has grown three sizes. Yeah, it's it's very strange here at work because Greg is very predictable. Yeah, and you know what you're going to get from Greg, and then all of a sudden, he started. It seemed like Rick. It was almost like a thaw. Yeah, we, we we you know, and we witnessed it before us. It, it was like the movie The Grinch when you know he heard the singing down in Whoville. Yes, and his heart grew three sizes, and it broke the scope. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's it's just a it's a different. The softer side of Greg is larger than it's ever been. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see by over my shoulder. Can you see that picture yeah, hanging on? Yeah, the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right there, that precious. Oh my gosh, that oh, baby. Um, he has literally just turned our world upside down. I mean, you you think that you could, that you love something? It, there is no love like the way you love your grandbaby. Um, and and y'all will experience it one day, and you'll see. But as far as this one right here, um, <laughs> he's just a big puddle of mush. I mean that. <laughs> That baby has completely changed him for the better, you know, for the better. But, um, you know, oh, yeah. he loves that baby and that baby loves his papa because papa, papa, you know, you, Rick, you remember how we used to always say that when we would all be at Papa Nana's on Sunday afternoon having uh, Sunday dinner. Yes. And Papa Nana would just let the kids just do whatever yes. they wanted to you know, just ripping and running over their new hardwood in the foyer on their little, you know, scooter yes. things. And we were just like, what are y'all doing? You know, they're messing up your floor. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that that happens. That happens yeah. when you become, a, when you become a Lily and a Papa, you don't That's care anymore. Part. And he, Greg's terrible. I have to tell him sometimes, now Greg, you, you got to tell him no. You have to tell him no. He's got to learn. He can't do things. Greg, will. he loves to turn the light switches on and off. And he'll run to Greg and stick his little arms up. He yeah. wants Papa to get, take him. And Greg will walk through this house and take mm -hmm. him to every light switch and just stand there 
and and Alice is just turning the lights on and off, on and off, you know. And, and you would have just, screamed at your own kids, you're going to blow the bulb. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. But no, he lets him do it. He walks through the house and just lets him he do it. it. <laughs> and Ellis loves it. So, yeah, he's he's a good papa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used, to cut, we used to call it Six Flags Over Nan and Pop. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Yeah, yes. I mean, suddenly yeah. these people that told us how hard their lives were and how money was not available, suddenly there's toys and $1 bills shooting out of their pockets and purses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where, where did all this come from? <laughs> uh, there it is. <laughs> We used to get tickled because, um, you know, Papa Nana, they didn't miss any ball games. So they would come to Taylor's uh, baseball games and Chandler was a little bitty thing. And uh, Pop would give her a $5 bill to go to the concession stand with. But then he would go with her and buy her what she wanted. So she just ended up with $5 every ball game. Right. And so I was in her room one day, put some clothes in her top drawer, and I pulled her drawer open. And you have never in your life seen so much money. <laughs> it was $5 bills and ones. And I was like, oh, my gosh, where did she get this stash? You know, she's five years old. I mean, what is she doing on the side? I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, and I said, Chandler, where did you get all this money? And she said, my pop gives it to me every, at Taylor's Ball Games. Yeah. <laughs> but she would take it home and stick it in the drawer. Remember that? There's no telling how much Yeah, her money. not spending it. I, I guess that skips a generation or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? You yeah. <laughs> I don't know where she got that hoarding money, not spending it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a crazy idea. Greg Burgess, oh my gosh, you know, whatever, he, that's not true. He, listen, I hear him on the air talking about the boxes from Amazon and my stuff. My Lord. Listen, that, those are necessities. It's things that we need. It is. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't, I don't spend. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's I don't. A, that's a whole nother podcast. Well, honestly, a- listen, straight up, if I do spend, I'm bad about spending for my kids i yeah, do true. tell the truth lean in here and speak that i want everybody oh, to know that's true it's see that's true chandler. it's mostly for <laughs> chandler and taylor and ellis um i i do i'm bad about buying for for my kids i don't buy a lot for myself but i buy for my kids i, I can't believe yeah. taylor is is grown and has a child now because it just seems like yesterday that Rick was terrorizing him in the car seat. Can you believe that? I mean, that's a, that, that, and he's so, he's so, he's a great man, but as a little boy, I mean, him pretending to be Garth Brooks, uh, oh, and, 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 and all the stuff. scared of cocky. And he, that was my favorite. Yeah, scared of mascots. And Rick, when you would act like cocky was coming over, and he wasn't anywhere in sight, but you'd act like you were talking, <laughs> and Taylor would go berserk. That was I, and look, and listen, there's still one, there's, there's a video out there of Taylor. If we could find it, it, it and put it on America's Funniest Videos, it would it would be in the top three, and everybody would vote. Do you remember when he went to Chuck E. Cheese? Chuck e. Cheese. I know what you mean. He went to Blake's Chuck E. Cheese party. That's my oldest son, Boomer. And those kids were so happy, and he's dancing with the band. For some reason, mechanical didn't bother him. And he's sitting yeah. up there, and they're dancing to the Chuck E. Cheese band. All these little—I remember he still had a little cap yeah. on. And all of a sudden, yeah. Chuck E. Cheese starts come walking out to meet the kids, and all the kids turn. With joy, yep. to Chuck E. Cheese except one little boy with his cap on, and that's Taylor Burgess, and he took off running and dove under the table. He <laughs> but for him God. going from joy to terror, <laughs> he was so scared. God love him. We had to try to talk him out from underneath the table. But yeah, he was one minute he was breaking it down. I mean, dancing, just having the best time, and he turned around and <laughs> he dove under the table. I think still yeah. one of my favorites is you would talk up Christmas lights. Oh yeah, and remember we get all torn. Remember, and, y'all be trying to get him in the car seat, <laughs> and he said, like, "Well, we're gonna see Christmas lights." And y'all said, "We're not. Nobody's going to see Christmas lights." And, and y'all, you, you y'all get, get him. Him in, shut the door, and Rick would say, All right, who's in for Christmas lights? And you'd hear him just go nuts. <laughs> he'd take his head and just go back and act the car seat. Why would I do things like that? Why? Rick, Rick Burgess was the absolute, I mean, he's the best uncle, but oh my gosh. He would, I mean, do stuff like that. And then Greg and I were left to deal with it. Uh, like all the way home, Taylor in the, in the car seat, buckled in, screaming, I want to go with Uncle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And we were like, why does Rick do this? Why does he do this? Well, and then, you know, uh, Angie, our sister, has actually tried to talk to Greg and to me going, what joy to do two grown men get out terrorizing little children? (laughs) But I can't describe it. It's just fantastic. (laughs) Uh, I've I've always enjoyed it. But um, so talk. you know what's kind of odd, too, talking about Taylor? 
Because if you look out over the Burgess family, he's the only one that now, so far, that has been called and is being called Coach Burgess. I mean, we have this whole legacy of Pop, and he's the Coach Burgess, and all these different sons and grandsons, and then all of a sudden, Taylor becomes the next Coach Burgess. I know. Isn't that awesome? That just – that, that makes my heart so happy. Yeah. It does. And I'm going to tell you, and Nana will tell you too, um, at Taylor's ball games, watching him on the sideline coaching, it is amazing how genetics work because he looks so much like Pop standing on that sideline. His mannerisms – I mean, you know how Pop always had his papers folded over and stuck in his back pocket? Yeah. Well, Taylor does that. But Pop would bend over, you yeah. know, and like – he squatted down with his hands on his knees yeah. while he's just looking. Taylor does that. And um, the first time that, that Papa Nana were with us at a game, watching him coach in Georgia, Nana leaned over to me and she said, oh, my goodness, Lisa, he looks just like his pop. Look at him. And um, and he did, you know, and it and it, it just it it melted her heart, you know, just seeing Taylor down there following in his pop's footsteps. So, yeah, we love it. We Is love it. it. And we are so glad that he is back home in sweet home Alabama. Yeah, it's how, been a long, been a long five years. I know. Years. Been praying about that a lot, and we had a fault. We had one time we thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. And uh, yeah, and, and, and but it's it's happened in God's timing. But little known That's fact, right. if you you know you say you say Taylor's like his grandfather, and I'm sure he's got traits of Greg too. He does seem to be kinder and and and, and a little less rude to Ritz. <laughs> but what people but what people Amen. don't what people don't understand it's actually his daughter, your daughter Chandler, is the one that's like Greg. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. she will hack on somebody at the drop of a hat in a heartbeat in a heartbeat. And, and she is so much like everybody says, Oh, she looks just like you, you know, y'all are twins. She looks just like you, but honestly, she, she has her daddy's sense of humor. <laughs> She gets so much joy. If somebody falls down, her and Greg think that it is like the best thing they have ever seen. And, and here I am like, oh, you know, oh, my gosh. You remember the hitchhiker? Yeah. Pop in here and tell the story about that. Y'all, this right here was horrible. Horrible. There was a guy hitchhiking on the side of the road in a car. We were behind him. And a car pulled over, had its blinker on. The guy takes off running and thinks they're stopping to get him. And I don't think they did it on purpose, but then they hit the gas and run off and left him. <laughs> and, and Lisa was like, oh, my goodness. And I was like, I feel Chandler looking at me. And I turned around and we made eye contact. And we just lost it. Lisa said we were both going to hell. <laughs> I did. That just came right out of my mouth. I said, well, just take that laughter on with you on the, on the train straight to hell. <laughs> I could feel Shannon looking at me the whole time. Sure, I knew sure. it was laughing. Well, you it know. broke my heart. That that hitchhiker thought that he had a ride. Somebody pulled over, and I I could just see him, and he was thinking, "Oh gosh, I don't have to walk anymore. Somebody's gonna." Oh. So they put him in the car. I thought he was thinking they're gonna put him in the car, and right when he walked to the car, they sped off. <laughs> it broke my I really heart. I don't think they saw him. But yes, they did. They, did. they were probably just like you and Chandler. Well, I bet Chandler <laughs> thinks it's a real hoot. Almost had a heart attack at her wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bubba. Yeah, we forget. And then there was there was Chandler's wedding, and Bubba nearly had a heart attack. Yeah, sure. Yeah, good Lord, Bubba, trying to upstage the bride. No, I was just trying to keep breathing. I know it. We knew Bless something it. was wrong. All that food, when we had a spread. Oh, too, I know. And I, looked, oh, I know. It's time to eat. I said, "Oh, Bubba's in trouble." I didn't even know that any of that was going on because, um, of course, I was in my own. You know, I don't know if y'all know this, but like. The few days following her wedding, yeah. I was hospitalized. Dehydrated <laughs> <laughs> herself. I dehydrated myself. Oh my. Yeah, <laughs> I think I awful. saw you in the waiting room up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had two people in, from the waiting that we ended up in the Almost hospital. killed us. Oh, it's good. I said, go get my friend Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was. He's yeah, down in was, the, he's down in the cath lab. That's right. Gosh. <laughs> I but, was hooked up to an IV bag about three of them. <laughs> but yeah, it'll do that to you. Woo, the stress of a wedding and just wanting everything to be perfect, you know, exactly like she had always wanted. And oh my gosh, was it not Rick Burgess the most oh. you know, I I came to you to you and I said, Yes, you know, we can't think of anybody better to to marry Chandler and Riley than Uncle Rick because you've known her since the the minute she was born you knew her heart you knew her love for the Lord her and Riley you know it just it was absolutely perfect and we could have had a 
there was a storm brewing right above us. And oh, yeah. right before you get to where the venue was, it was storming so bad. And I was in a knot all day long, you know, please, please. Because it was an outside wedding. That's oh, what yeah. she wanted. Um, and literally minutes before um, she walked down the aisle, that bullseye that was above us just disappeared. I know. And then remember afterwards, we had those two beautiful double rainbows. Yes. You remember that? Yes, Rick? I do. Yeah. We all do. And then and Chandler had a visit from a beautiful blue dragonfly. I know. You know? And that's so um, yeah, I, as I yeah. was driving off, the two rainbows are yeah. splitting right between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Bubba, the ER. Bubba, Bubba was yeah. trying to breathe. Yeah, Bubba was trying to breathe. <laughs> but yeah, watching God move over that day was just uh, uh, so so many things. It gives me chills, honestly, just just thinking about that day. It was it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. So, well, yeah. well, Lisa, you've you've done great. I told you this wouldn't need a big deal. Yeah, I, mean, I wish we could have got you to open up and talk a little bit. Yeah, you did. Maybe it. next time. You've done it. So, uh, <laughs> Greg, you survived. I think you got out of that pretty good. I did. She she didn't tell the story about the way I proposed to her. I was glad she she threw Well, we got time for that. Why don't what, you tell what, us what was that? Right quick. Oh, it's quick. No, let me share. Let me share. <laughs> Listen, it's... clearly we're getting older and her memory's left us. This is incorrect. <laughs> You're the one who is sleep deprived. How what's that word? Deprived? Sleep, yeah, sleep, sleep deprived. deprived yeah. yeah. No, real quick. We laugh about it because it's funny. Because anybody that knows him and the listeners that know Greg, this fits perfect with his personality. On Christmas Eve. Typical Christmas Eve, he comes over to my house. I was still at home with my daddy at the time. He comes over and um, we were going to, to my brother or my sister's house for Christmas or whatever. He comes in, so I go to the bedroom and get my shoes and stuff. And he comes in there and he hands me a box. Okay, you know, it wasn't nested. You know how you do the nesting and you put like a, a small box and a big box yeah, and yeah. you got to keep digging yeah, and pull yeah. that box. And box. No, it was one... Go ahead. Step out. It was one. It was one little square tip ring box. I mean, I knew what it was. Right. It was wrapped in paper. It was wrapped pretty, but it was a ring box. So he's just standing there. So and he hands it to me, and so I'm thinking, okay. So I open it up or whatever. Still thinking, is he going to drop down to one knee, or right. is he going to, you know, pull out a candle or something romantic or whatever? And I open it up, and it was my engagement ring. And I look at him, and he goes. Exactly, just like this, he says. I just thought it was time. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think it went that way. It, Willie G. But if you think about this, exact, listen. Think about this. So we've been together so long. The the proposal thing was a foregone conclusion. We that happened year. You know what I mean? We Greg, Greg, getting, Greg, can I say this? Yeah, all women like dream. All, we were gonna get married. all women dream of the phrase you just said. Yeah, I want my engagement to be like a foregone conclusion. All right. My all right. proposal was you a know foregone. What I mean? Where was, this, where was the surprise in it? He hands me a ring box, and then I open it up. And I he finally he, saved up enough money. He, I mean, he didn't even have, like, a, a, a look on his face of, like. Uh, she's misremembering. <laughs> I know exactly what happened. I know. And he was like, oh, I just thought it was Tom. And I'm like, wow, let, let me get a hold of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody got a tissue? I mean, you know. <laughs> Let me get up off the floor. I, I, I I'm so tough. Can you breathe? Can you breathe? <laughs> Climb down off that white horse. Climb down off that white yeah, horse, Greg. I mean, Dang, yeah. I mean, he could at least drop it in a bowl of ice cream or something to let me dig for it. I mean, <laughs> I mean something. Well, I made it count. Yeah, you have it. Here you are. How many years Here later? We are. 30. Nearly 40, nearly 40 years later. 39 years. Wow. Well. well, Lisa, thanks for being on today, and I, I appreciate you doing that. Lisa, we'll have you back. There's still a lot we need to cover. There's a lot. We'll do part two. We got yeah. part two coming up. Lisa <laughs> yeah, Burgess, okay. thanks for being with us, and, and thanks Thank to all of you. Have. For joining us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University.